become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding hi everybody golden era bookworm here and today we're going to talk about the science behind milk and egg protein and why it's worked for so so many years I mean, milk and egg protein, it's, it's been a bodybuilding staple since the golden years of bodybuilding. If you're an old timer in the iron game, then you probably would have been well versed on the benefits of milk and egg protein from the numerous ads that circulated during those nostalgic years where the muscle mags used to circulate for decades during the golden era. I know you've seen those ads with Dave Draper, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Frank Zane. They're all, you know, drinking and sipping their protein shakes in the California sun with dozens of girls frolicking around them. You know, they're, they're just selling that wonderful dream. And that's what the ads promised, big muscle and, you know, this wonderful dream. But the question really is, were the promises made in these advertisements just fantasy? Rio H. Blair and Vince Gironda definitely didn't think so. They were the original bodybuilding nutritional gurus, and they pushed the consumption of milk and egg protein for decades, and influenced the subsequent supplement industry that followed for years to come. Now before continuing on the science of milk and egg protein, I just want to talk a little bit about the history behind the advent of the milk and egg protein. So if you've watched my YouTube channel, you will have learned that the advent of milk and egg protein kind of came around just around um, after Gaylord Hauser, who was one of the first nutritional gurus to ever influence bodybuilding. He was already preaching the nutritional benefits of milk and eggs as early as the 1940s. I mean, one could argue that even beforehand, men like Eugene Sandow and the Saxon brothers were already talking about protein powders, but that's beside the point. We're talking about specifically milk and egg. And so one of the first people to really talk about that was uh, Gaylord Hauser. And of course, the silver era icon, Steve Reeves, he was not just a bodybuilding pioneer, but he was the first bodybuilder on record to ever create his own custom made protein powder and drink, which contained milk and egg protein. Prior to Rio H. Blair, he had already begun formulating his own special blend, understanding the benefits of these superfoods. Soon after, of course, Rio H. Blair followed, initially with his Johnson's High Protein Food, which was of course a soy-based protein. But soon after, he switched to milk and egg protein-based supplements called Blair's Protein after discovering the anabolic effects and benefits of milk and egg. An entire generation of bodybuilders would soon be influenced and follow his nutritional teachings like the word of the gospel. Vince Gironda was also convinced about the anabolic effects of milk and egg protein. But what were these effects? Muscles began to sprout left, right and center, literally. All the big names in bodybuilding like Weeder and Hoffman quickly caught on and began selling their own protein powders. Success stories were printed as articles or advertisements on virtually every muscle mag issue during the 60s and 70s. Many readers blamed steroids, of course, but even the bodybuilders themselves claimed that there was something special about milk and egg protein. Since then, of course, the protein fractions of milk and egg protein have been isolated, with science improving over time and showcasing the benefits of each fraction of milk and egg protein. This led, of course, to the birth of, for example, whey protein isolates, casein, and many other protein-based supplements. However, what about milk and egg protein itself? Has it now become obsolete? Not at all. I find it amazing that every time I sit down and begin to research Vince Gironda's theories on the medical databases, I'm able to prove many if not most of the theories he suggested half a century ago. Medical science has been catching up to the theories postulated by the bodybuilding and nutritional pioneers of the golden era. Milk and egg protein is no different. Let's have a look at some of the studies that have surfaced and what they have to say about the anabolic properties of milk and egg and the proteins found within. During the early 1920s and right up to the 1940s, the first medical studies were performed which demonstrated the correlation between milk consumption and growth rates in children. 
there appears to be a positive correlation between milk consumption and height, which indicates that there must be some anabolic components in milk. Further, several studies have attributed milk consumption to increased bone density. For a long time, however, it was unknown which components in milk were responsible for the anabolic effects. All the science actually comes from a great review paper from Mulgard and colleagues from 2011. It is interesting to note that since then it has been discovered that cow's milk, for example, has a much higher protein content than human breast milk. This uh, was actually published by Michelson and colleagues in 2007, which could of course explain the anabolic effects of milk and also the growth rate of calves versus human newborns. Calves grow at a much, much higher rate than humans, of course, as, as babies. And therefore, uh, scientists do at attribute some of the growth rate, at least, to the protein content found in cow's milk. However, this could lead one to theorize then that foods such as meat having a high protein content would therefore have the greatest anabolic effect. But this is not necessarily the case. When comparing the anabolic effects of the consumption of meat versus milk in children, it was shown that milk increased both insulin-like growth factor and insulin in two respective studies by Hope and colleagues in both 2004 and 2005. And that's right, you heard this right. It actually, milk actually increases both insulin growth factor, that is insulin growth factor one, and insulin which, you know, is the stuff that a lot of modern bodybuilders inject themselves with. Of course, uh, since that time, whey protein has also been shown to stimulate insulin levels and increase muscle mass. However, when comparing whey with whole milk protein, it is obvious that the whole milk protein has a greater anabolic effect than just whey. It's very important to emphasize this point. Um, nutritionists have continued to isolate the different fractions of protein. The fractions were discovered to have different effects on the body, but by isolating whey from whole milk, you actually, for example, can lose some of the effect of insulin growth factor 1, which is a powerful anabolic. Vince knew the anabolic effect of milk protein, that is whole milk protein, and this is why he stood by it for decades. It worked then and it still works now. Now we're going to talk about the anabolic effects of the whole egg and as well as the egg protein isolates. Many a bodybuilder today will cringe, of course, at the thought of eating whole eggs, especially raw, with scares of cholesterol creeping up their spines. Yes, the cholesterol debate does go on, but this being a video focusing on the anabolic properties of milk and egg protein, I thought I would leave that debate for another day. But why? Why did Rio H. Blair and Vince Gironda rave on about the egg? Well, they believed it was the perfect food for bodybuilders. So much so, of course, you will know this, uh, that Vince would happily have you drinking three dozen eggs a day. You knew that was coming from me. Uh, and the question is, was Vince mad or was he right? A fantastic and recent publication from 2017 proved a very, very important point. That will hopefully make you reconsider whether to ever throw out, for example, the yolk again. Van Vliet and colleagues demonstrated that the consumption of the whole egg promoted greater stimulation of post-exercise muscle protein synthesis, that is, muscle hypertrophy, than by the consumption of the egg white alone. That is, the whole egg, eating the whole egg after exercising stimulates more protein synthesis than just egg white protein. That was discovered in 2017. What can I say? I hate to repeat myself again and again, but Vince was right. Having said all this, many bodybuilders also swear by egg whites. I mean, of course, it's going to still be an anabolic effect from egg whites. And of course, these bodybuilders have every right to believe in egg white protein because it does have an anabolic effect. Several publications actually have demonstrated the association between ingesting oval albumin, or I should say ovalbumin, right? Ovalbumin is the uh, albumin protein fraction found in eggs. I think it's about 40% actually of protein egg, of, of, of egg protein. And um, it was found that ingesting ovalbumin elevated insulin growth factor one. Again, 
Egg white protein containing ovalbumin can definitely therefore be regarded as one of the anabolic inducing compounds in the humble egg. So if you're interested in learning more about golden era nutrition, well, there's heaps of books on my website, of course. They're all ebooks written by both Rio H. Blair and Vince Gironda, which goes in depth as to the effects, the anabolic effects of having uh, the milk and egg proteins, as well as lots of recipes in these books. They're all available on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. It will really help you design your own diet, especially um, for making bodybuilding gains. Again, these books are available on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. So in conclusion, you know, there's a plethora of research out there that exists on the subject of milk and egg protein. It's really exhaustive. And to be honest, it would take me hours to review in a single video. So basically, this is an introduction. I find it absolutely fascinating when I, when I start reading all these papers, because it really serves to remind us of the incredible minds shared by both Rio H. Blair and Vince Gironda. And more importantly, it reminds us of the important nutritional lessons they were trying to teach us. Given the anabolic properties of both milk and egg protein recently demonstrated by modern science, it is no wonder that both came out and formulated their own versions of milk and egg protein during the golden years of bodybuilding. And of course, they stood by these products for decades. It is also no wonder that men like Larry Scott, Don Howarth, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Frank Zane swore by these products. So to answer the initial question, is milk and egg protein obsolete? Absolutely not. I would dare to say that these proteins are more complete and can induce a better anabolic response than, for example, pure whey protein alone, as nature has designed them that way. Although this video has only served as an introduction to the science of milk and egg protein, I do hope that it can serve you in your quest for physical, mental, spiritual, and intellectual perfection, which is what bodybuilding and physical culture is truly about. If you've enjoyed this video, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Thanks for watching. Leave me your comments and to support the channel, become a patron. Please donate via PayPal or visit my respective websites for ebooks, e magazines, autographed photos, as well as merchandise on my Teespring store. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash stores slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash stores slash golden era bookworm. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.